Welcome to the first Sikha of Parshas Bolok in Chelek Yud Gimel on page 78. This is a Sikha on Rashi in the Nevua of Bilam on the Pasuk Matoivoy Alecha Yaakov, which we say every day in the beginning of davening in the morning. Ala Pasuk Matoivu Oy Alecha Yaakov Mishkan Eisecha Yisrael. How goodly are the tents of Yaakov and the dwellings of the Yidin. Pirish Rashi, so Rashi explains. Matoivo Yalecha, what did he see that's good in the tents of Yidin? Al Shara Pischeyen She'ena Mechovanim Zemuzeh. He saw the openings of their tents are not exactly one across another. In order that they shouldn't be able to peer into another person's tent, so they made the openings not exactly across another person's tent. Mishkanei Secha, what's the meaning of Mishkanei Secha? Chaniyoi Secha. It's your encampments. Kitagumai, as the Targum here says, that it refers to the encampments. Dovar Acher, a second shot. Matoivu Oyalecho, Matoivu Oyal Shiloi Ubeisei Lomim. How good is the oil of the Mishkan when it was in Shiloi, and also the Beis Hamikdash be Yishuvan when it was standing. Shemakrivim ben Karbonis lechaper Alechem. That in the both in Mishkan Shiloi and in the Beis Hamikdash, the Yidden bring Karbonis to atone for them. Mishkan Eisecha, according to this pshat, what's the meaning of Mishkan Eisecha? Af keshehein charevin, even when the Mishkan Shiloi or the Beis Hamikdash is destroyed, it's also good. Lefi shehein mashkin aleichem, because the Eibush takes them as a security for you. Vechorbana and their destruction kapare al anafoshes. It's an atonement for the souls. Shenemar, as we can see in the Pasuk, it says, Kilo Hashem as Chamosai. The Abish to end his anger, Ubamekilo. How does the Abish to end his anger? Vayatzeis Eish Bitsiyan. And he burnt a fire in Siyan by burning the Beis Hamikdash. That's the security and that's the kapara that it brought upon the Yidden through the Chorban of the Beis Hamikdash. So these are the two Pshatim that Rashi here says in the Pasuk. So the Rebbe has many, many questions on these Rashis here. No less than nine questions, as we'll see. So the first question over here is, Bipirushoi, when Rashi says, Shemishkan Eisecha, Hainu Chani Eisecha, that Mishkan Eisecha means your encampments. Lama Lepirish Mishkan Eisecha Kipshutoi, why does Rashi not say that the meaning of the word Mishkan Eisecha is, like it is the simple Pshat, Loshen Rabim Shal Mishkan. Mishkan means dwelling. Mishkan Eisecha, your dwellings. How goodly are the dwellings of Yidin? Why encampments? O Befrat Shalemetzinu Bekra, Loshen Yochid, the Chanoyos Mishkan. You never find in the Torah when it describes the Yidin where they where they camped that the Torah should use the singular term of Mishkan. Kiyim Chanoyseinu that we camped. We the encampment of Yidin is is Chanoyseinu, not Mishkan. The term Mishkan means a dwelling, and Rashi here is taking the word out of the Pashat Pshat. He's bringing the Targum that says that it means Chanoyseicha. What's forcing Rashi to do this? Beis Meloshen of another question. If you look at the words of the pasuk, Mochach, it's clear Shema Toivu when it says how good Nimshach Gam LeMishkanisach Yisrael. It's saying how good are the tents of the Eden, and also Ma Toivu goes in the second part of the pasuk, Mishkanisach Yisrael. O Kiilu Nemar, as if it would have said in the pasuk, Ma Toivu Mishkanisach Yisrael. How goodly are the encampments of Eden? Well, the now seemingly according to Rashi. What's so special and what's so good about the encampments of Yidin? Rashi doesn't tell us. When it comes to Oyalecho, Rashi explains that Bilam saw that the entrances of their tents are not facing one another. But when it comes to Mishkan Secha, Rashi doesn't tell us what that is. Gimel, another question. Yedua Klal Bepirish Rashi It's well known, the Klal, the rule, when it comes to Rashi, the way he interprets the Psukim. Kimaduba Kama Pamim, it was said already many times. Shekashamevi Beza Yesu Pirushim Binyan Echod. If Rashi brings two or more interpretations on one Indian, each one of these Pshatim has a question that there isn't in the other Pshat. So the question over here is, Umayana Kushi has been hidden done. What are the relative difficulties with each one of these Pshatim and therefore Rashi brings another Pshat? Dalid, another question here is, Bipirish Hashani. When Rashi brings the second shot, Maitik Oidapam as Atevis Matoivo Oyalecho. Rashi again brings the words of the Pasik, Ma Toivo Oyalecho. 
And Ashi does not say, as he usually does, in short, Usually when Ashi brings in the second shot, he says, and goes directly into his second shot. He doesn't bring the words from the Pasuk again. Why does Rashi do that here? Hey, the fifth question. Maine Rashi counts Shiloi Ubeisel That what are the goodly things? What's good that uh, Bilam sees? He sees Shiloi and Beisel Amim. Ve'ena maske oil mayit. And Rashi does not mention the oil mayit right over here. The Yidden war in the midbar with the Mishkan. The oil mayit shahay itam beisha barcham, which Bilam sees now as he's benching the Yidden. Why does Rashi skip that and go to the Mishkan Shiloi and to the Beisel Mikdash? Vav the fifth, the sixth question. So what's the good that Bilam sees in oil Shiloi and in the base of Mikdash? Mefarish Rashi, so Rashi says, Shemakrivim ben Karbonis. That it's the place that the Yidin bring Karbonis. L'chayre. Seemingly. Why doesn't Rashi bring the, the main goodness that's here? Apipshuti shal mikra in, in, in the Pashtab Shara of the Pasuk, when we look back, to what the mitzvah is, kefishim mefurish bikra, v'asuli mikdash, b'shvil, v'shachanti b'saycham, that the mitzvah is, to build a mikdash, what purpose? To have the shechina dwell there. That's the main goodness that there is in the uh, mishkan, or in the base of mikdash. Hainu shei mekaymis lashras ha-shechina, there are places for the dwelling of the shechina. So why does Rashi specifically point out, makrivin behem korbanis? Seventh question: Mane geila avonis pirish akosav ayalecho shah karbonis heim lechaper alechem. What's the reason that Rashi spells out when he explains ayalecho regarding the the the, the churban that the karbonis are mechaper they atone upon you v'shachurbanis shal mishkanisecho or kapara al anafoshes and ayalecho. Um, let me go back again a second. When it says ayalecho, that refers to the base of mikdash that it's standing. So, so Rashi says that it's the Karbanis, which are Kaparan. And on the Beis HaMikdash, when it's destroyed, Mishkanai Secha, Hu Kapara Al Anafashis. It's a Kapara for your souls. Why is it Pachlal Negev for Rashi to bring this? The whole lineage of Karbanis. He sees the good, the goodness that Yidin have, which is the Beis HaMikdash. And that goodness is both when it's standing and even when it's destroyed. Why does Rashi have to bring this whole lineage of the Kapara, of the Karbanis? And Rashi stresses that there's a Kapara for the souls. If for understanding the meaning of the word Mishkan over here, Mishkan Eisecha, that it's a Mishkan, it's a Shemera, Shemerum is Bezeh Chorbanai, and it's a hint on the Chorban of the Beis HaMikdosh. It's a security, which is a, that's what the Chorban is. Nochotz Ladas, it's important to know, Shah Chorban, Kapara Al Anafasha, is that the Chorban is a Kapara for the souls of the Yidin, Madua Al Aniskir Inyin Zeh Be Pirish Rashi Beresh Parshas Pekudeh. Why doesn't Ashi bring this up earlier, in the beginning of Parshas Pekudeh? Shigam Shom Pirish Rashi, Ha Mishkan Mishkan, Shnei Pa'omim, the Torah writes the word Mishkan twice, Remez Le Mishkan, Shinis Mashkin B'Shnei Churbanan Alavainisein Shal Yisrael. It hints to the two Bate Mikdash that have been taken as a security both times, they wish to destroy the Besam Mikdash because of the sins of Yidin. There, Rashi does not bring up this union of Karpara Alanafashis. Why not? Ches, the eighth question here is, Ma'u in the kapara al hanafashis? The nefashis, the souls, need a kapara. What kind of a kapara are we talking about when we say nefashis? Lashen she'ene ragul klal. This is a lashen that's totally unusual, that the nefesh of the person needs the kapara. Tess, the ninth question here is, Kivin shal karchach tzarech loimar. She'yashdiyak b'seh. Definitely, when Rashi chooses this term, kapara ala nefashis, it's definitely precise. Maya raya ma'aposik, kilo Hashem es chamosik. The Deibish that ends his anger, shechurbanon kapara ala nefashis. That's the posik that Rashi brings to prove what the churban accomplishes, that the churban is a kapara for the nefashis. Where do you see in the posik kilo chamosai, that it's a raya for this Indian of kapara ala nefashis? So we have many, many questions over here. And the, the Rebbe wants to know what are the two Pshatim in general in Rashi. Why does Rashi bring two Pshatim? And uh, what's the uh, Indian of Chani Yosecha? What is this all about? Rashi doesn't even spell out what's good about the encampments of Yidin. 
And then in the second shot, the main thing that the Rebbe focuses on a lot over here is this Indian of Kapara al Anafoshis. The Chlal the Indian of Karbanis that Rashi brings up. And specifically, this Indian of Kapara al Anafoshis. What is this terminology of Kapara al Anafoshis all about? The Habir calls that, so the explanation and all of this is as follows. So let's go back to looking at the theme of what Bilam is talking about when he says this Navua. These are psukim here that Bilam is saying is Navua, but we have to look a little bit earlier in a few psukim before to see what he's talking about. As an introduction to this Navua of Matayvu, or as we'll see soon whether this is actually a Navua or not. Let's see. But as an introduction to this Matayvu, so what does it say? Vayisa Bilam is saying of Anil, Bilam raises up his eyes. Vayar es Yisrael shaychen l'shvatov. And he sees the Yidin dwelling each to its shevet, each to its tribe. So Pirish Rashi, Rashi explains the meaning of shaychen l'shvatov. Ra kol shevet v'shevet shaychen la'atzmai. He saw each shevet dwelling to, their, to themselves. Each shevet had their place, as we know the Yidin in the Midbar were divided with the, the golem, each one had their place, and each shevet was separate from, the, from another. And they're not intermingled one with another. Everyone has their own place. And Ra, he also saw, that their doors, their openings of their tents, are not exactly across each other. That a person shouldn't, when he opens his door, and another, he has a tent right across, where the door is also could be open, and be able to look directly into his neighbor's tent. They created it in a way that there should be privacy and modesty and sneers, that everybody's tent, the door should be, the opening should be, not a get across another tent. So the Rebbe explains now this Rashi, of Sheikh and Shvatav, and based on this Rashi, we'll understand Matoivu, which follows this Indian. What brings Rashi to explain Sheikh and Lushvatov this way? Pashtus Loshan Akosov. If you look at the simple reading of this Pasik here, Vayar es Yisrael, Sheikh and Lushvatov, and he saw the Yidin dwelling according to their Shvatim, Mashma Shara Chidish. Bilam recognized, he saw something unique, something new. Hanhagim Yuchedes Vetevi Biyaser, a very unique and good conduct of Yidin. Shahare, Riyazu Garma, Levati Olav Ruach Alekim. It's this that he saw that caused that the spirit of the Ebishter was upon him to bench the Yidin. As Rashi says, Upirish Rashi, Allah Beliboy, when he saw this goodness of Yidin, so it entered into his heart, Shalayla Kalalim, not to curse the Yidin. Van Hagezu, Haisen Nires, Beshaychen, Oifen, Chanoyes, Israel, Shvatov. So therefore, Rashi explains what was special. What was so good, what was so unique of what he saw in the way the Yidin were, were living there in the Midbar. He saw how the Yidin were camping in the Midbar. So, He saw how the Yidin lived. Each Shevet was living separately. It was organized and each Shevet had their own place. It wasn't just one big intermingling between one and another. And this shows that the Yidin were very, very careful with their lineage. They were very careful in their lifestyle, the way they lived, and who married who, and the children that were born, that it should be kosher to children. And they were very, very careful with, with, with their whole lifestyle and the yuchsen. This already is already brought before in Parshas Bamidbar, when they had to prove their, prove their lineage of each Shevet, Kimavur B'Pirish Rashi, as Rashi says, how did they prove when they were counting the Yidin? How did they prove which child, which person belonged to which Shevet? They brought the books that they had, where they had written the lineage of every person, and witnesses that testified on exactly who was born to whom. It was very, very clear, and everybody lived in this way, where the Shvatim was separate, they camped that way, they lived that way, they had everything recorded, and the birth of all the people. That Shazet, the Rebbe says, Mayre on my lossum on the floor, the Midas Atznias. This shows on the, the amazing Maila of Yidin, to what extent they were careful with Tznias, for everybody to live appropriately and properly in a kosher way and have children in a kosher way. This was the special middah of Tznias that he saw amongst Yidin, that each Shevet camps separately and vein and Murav, they're not just all intermingled with one another. Since Bilam saw this level of Yidin, Nispal B'yayser. He was very uh, moved by this. 
He decided not to curse the Yidin. That's one detail that Ashi tells us. But Ashi says something else. It should have been written in the Pasuk. That the Yidin would dwell in each one in their Shvatim. Why does it say the Shvat Tov? The mashma she'en ha'shvatim mu'uravim yachad. Shoichel ha'shvatim means that they dwell each shevet separately. That's the first point that Rashi says here. Yach ha'shediyek ha'kosov lo'yem ha'shoichel ha'shvat tov. What does the Pasuk say? It says shoichel ha'shvat tov. In their tribes, in their shvatim, hareza yachacha, that exact word that the Pasuk uses, the shvat tov, proves shara o'edin yanayla. That yes, that uh, sorry, uh, Bilam saw something else here. Hamizbate l'shvat b'l'shvat tov, which means b'chol shevet v'shevet bifnei atzmai. Not only the general style of encampments of all the yidden, the way all the shvatim dwelled separately, but within each shevet separately, nikesh zeh shevet Yisrael. You looked at the way they uh, put up their tents within each one of the shvatim, and there was something unique that you saw that yidden had. And therefore Rashi adds another point, that they set up their tents with the doorways, not one across another, so they shouldn't peer into their friend's tent. We'll move on, that Bilam seeing this level of Yidin, this mile of Yidin, this caused Bilam not to want to curse the Yidin. So there were two things that Bilam over here saw that was unique. In this Lashon of Sheikh and Shvatov, he saw the general style of encampments of Klal Yisrael, that all the Shvatim are separate. And he also saw the specific way they are living within their tents and the openings of their tents that they're not one across another, so they shouldn't look into each other's tents. So now we come back to the Rashi's Pshat of Matoivu Oyalecha Yaakov and Mishkan Yisrach Yisrael. Umasim la'agdome, now fitting to this introduction of what Bilam saw, Mevayi Rashi, Hemshech HaKsuvim Rashi explains the continuation of the Psukim. Shekeshaba Bilam achrekin l'dabat toiv al Yisrael, when Bilam came to speak good on Yidin, hu mefarish, so Rashi says, la'achri ha'psiche, after the opening words that it says, n'um Bilam b'noi ba'oyr v'goymer glu'ye noyim, describing and opening who Bilam is, so hatam loma ena mekalalom. So here the pasuk gives you the reason why he's not going to be cursing them. So this is not actually yet the prophecy that Bilam says. This is giving the reason based on what he saw, based on the two things he saw. He now is going to give the reason of why he's not going to curse the Yidden. Mitzad beis milas beis am milas anal. And here he says because of the two things, the two good things he saw amongst the Yidden. Matayvu oyal lecha Yaakov. He saw the tents of the Eden. He saw how their tents are positioned, the openings, the doorways of their tents. And then he also saw the Mishkan Yisachah. What does Mishkan Yisachah refer to? The general style of the encampment of Yidin in the Midbar, the way each one of the Shvatim was camping separately. There was no intermingling between one and another. The two points that we spoke about before, and therefore the Pasuk over here says, Ma toivu, how good is? When you read this in the simple interpretation of this, this is not yet the bracha of Bilam or the nevu of Bilam. This is Bilam expressing his spilos, his excitement, or how moved he is of the good things that he sees. Which is the reason why he won't curse them. He speaks in their praise and he benches them. And this is the Pshar of Rashi here. That's one good detail that he saw amongst the Eden. The, their tents, the position of the doorways of their tents. Mishkan Yisecha Rashi says, It refers to their encampments. So Rashi switches from the simple pshat, Mishkan Yisecha would usually mean your dwellings. Why does Rashi here say that it means Chani Yisecha? Because this is Hamayla Hashni Hanal. This is in connection to what we said before, the second Mayla, the second good thing that he saw amongst Yidin, the way all the Shvatim and generally were encamped in the Midbar. 
the way they were camping in the Midbar, each Shevet separately. And this is also fitting with what it says before in the Ready and Parshas by Midbar. Each one of the, uh, from Yidin, they all camped in their camp with their Shevet. The Kivin Shein Zeh Pirish Aragel. Now, because this pshat of Mishkan Secha is not the usual pshat of this word. Usually, Mishkan Secha does mean dwellings. It doesn't mean encampments. So, therefore, Maisef Rashi Rayel Pirushai Kitaguma. As a proof to this pshat, Rashi adds that he took it from the Targum. Shat Targum Mefarish Kain Base Meishrach, the place of your encampment. Shazer Teguma Shalchanoya. The word Meishrach means your encampment. Bechol Mokim everywhere. So therefore, Rashi took from the Targum this pshat that it refers to Chani Yosecha, which is the uh, second Indian that Bilam, the good thing that Bilam saw amongst Yidin. This is all the first pshat of Rashi. So Rashi here is, is explaining that Bilam is expressing the two good details that he saw amongst Eden, and because of these two things, he says, how good they are, and therefore this is the reason why he's going to later bench them. Um, now that Rebbe will explain, what are the questions in this pshat? According to this pshat, the first pshat that we hear in Rashi, Kosha, we have the following questions. Aleph number one, as we already pointed out, We never find that the word Mishkan means encampment. The word Mishkan usually means dwelling. So this is an unusual interpretation of this word. Beis, another problem here is the order of the Pasik. Chanoya Sashvatim is Klal v'gam bizman. The way the Shvatim in general are camping in the Midbar, that's more inclusive. That refers to the general picture of how the lifestyle of all the Shvatim. And it's also something that comes earlier in time. And only afterwards should come the detail, which is once they actually put up their tents and the way they position their tents. That's only a detail. The Chol Shevet, within each Shevet. Okay, and if so, the Pasuk seems to be out of order. The first should have spoken about the good that he saw in Yidin in the general encampments of all the Shvatim before he talks about the, the, the specific position of the tents. Which this is also the reason for the order in Rashi before. Before when Rashi spoke about what Bilam saw, so Rashi first says that he, show, he saw them all camping separately and they're not intermingled. Only afterwards Rashi says, Because that's a detail within each Shevet. So why over here does the Pasuk say it in an opposite order? Gimel, another thing over here is, the fact that each Shevet is dwelling separately, camps separately, and they don't intermingle, this seems to be the, the, the main point over here. This is relevant for the status of all the people that were born to know who their father and mother was and to have it clear they're, they're, that they're born bekashras, they're born pure. The Godlo Malose Baharbe, this is much more relevant, this is much more powerful. Comparing it to the other detail that the openings, their doorways, are not exactly one across the other. Which is only coming to prevent this Indian that a person shouldn't be able to look into his friend's tent. What's, what's more important? What's more relevant? The fact that you have the cheskas leidosom, that Yidin lived in a, li a lifestyle where every person was born the kashros and there was the modesty in their lifestyle, that's a much more general, general Indian than talking about this detail that they, the doorways are not one across each other and they can't look into each other's tents. Okay, for this reason as well, the order in the Pasuk should have been the opposite. How good is the encampments of Eden in general? And And then to talk about the detail of the doorways. Matoivu does go on both, but because I'm Mistaver, it's logical to say, Kiprat 
the matoivu, with what it starts off with, when it says matoivu, whatever it says first, that's, the goodness of that is stronger. That's why it comes first, and that's right directly after the word of matoivu. So, what's the reason for the fact that we switch to say there of the Pasuk? Besides what the Rebbe said before, that it's a klal and a prat, now the Rebbe is looking at the actual theme of these two things, that in the Teichene Indian, it makes sense to talk about what's more important, the fact that the Eden don't intermingle and they marry properly and they have children properly, that's much more important than this detail of Eden not looking into one each other's tent. Shaila Dalid al Matoivu Goim, according to the Pshat that we're saying here, that Matoivu is actually not a Navua. This is just Bilam explaining the reason why he sees good in Yidin that he's not going to curse them. There's no Navua here. In the Pasuk where it says, that I've quoted before, part of the Pasuk, that this is Bilam speaking, so then it says also there that that Bilam hears a prophecy from the Abishter. And only after that, that it says that he hears the prophecy of the Eibishter, does it say Matoivu. But according to this Pshara Rashi, it's not a prophecy. It's not yet a prophecy. So this Pasuk should have been before when it says, Nu'um Shemeya Imre. Af However, the Rebbe says we could say, <coughs> Since there's this opening where Bilam starts speaking about who he is, that he's Bilam, so the Pasuk concludes to say that he also is having a prophecy. Although the next Pasuk is not yet the prophecy. But still, the Rebbe says, Matoivu over here is coming after it says that he had a prophecy when this is not yet the actual prophecy that Bilam had. Because of these questions, maybe Rashi, Pirisheni, Rashi brings a second shot. And here, the second shot, Rashi is telling us that Bilam is telling us a prophecy about the future. That Matoivu refers to the future in Oil Shiloi and the Beisam Mikdash when, they, when they're standing. And Rashi doesn't have to explain, but it's obvious, well Rashi will explain, but even before Rashi gives the explanation of what goodness there is there, it's simply understood that there's a tremendous goodness in the Oil Shiloi and the Beisam Mikdash. Because it says here the terminology of oil, a tent, that's how Rashi knows we're talking about the oil of Shiloi. It does use a plural term, so it's clear. It's including not only one place, it's not only including oil Shiloi, but it also includes another place, in the content of what this place is about. It's a mikdash, it's similar to oil shile. And therefore, as she says, it refers to the base of to the base of mikdash. So that's the pshat of Matoivu Oyalech, referring to the base of mikdash. This is a nevua for the future going on the base of mikdash. And then, Mishkan Yisrach Yisrael. This is also a nevua on oil shile and the base of mikdash. Here, the Pasuk is talking about at the time when they are destroyed. So here the Torah describes it in the Nevoa here as a mashkin, mishkan isecha, malashem mashkin. That this is the time period when the Abisha takes away the base of Mikdash as a security for Klal Yisrael. That's the second shot of Rashi. So the main thing that's, that's bringing Rashi to say this is that now the order of the Psukim is, is, is much better. First you talk about the base of Mikdash and the oil shile when it's standing. And then after that you talk about when it's destroyed. So the order of the Pasuk is right. And also it's a Nevoa. It's Taka Nevoa, which comes after it said, Neum, Neum Shemeya Imre Kehle. He's saying a Nevoa here. Now the Rebbe will come and explain why Rashi brings in the Indian of Karbanis. And also why Rashi specifically talks about that the Khurban is a Kapara for the Nefoshes. What's the meaning, what's the significance of this expression? As mentioned before, it's self-understood what goodness there is in the oil shiloi and the base of mikdash. Both when they're standing, and even after they're destroyed. It's a security that the Ebesha holds for Yidin, that Yidin should do tshuva. So there's, there's a goodness in that as well, it's self-understood. As we mentioned before, so the same is relevant for the second shot as well. 
when this pasuk uses the term ma toivu, how good, who ke'en nesin is tam lomein mekalam. This is the giving a reason why he's not cursing the Yid. In other words, even according to this second pshat, that this is already the beginning of the prophecy of Bilam, but nevertheless, even according to this pshat, when the Pasuk uses the term matoivu, it's also giving a reason why he's not cursing Yid. This is also true over here according to this second pshat. The goodness in the prophecy of Bilam here is also a reason why he doesn't curse them. So therefore Rashi adds over here, that when the Beis HaMikdash is standing, you bring Karbonis that atones for Yidin. The Gam, and Rashi also adds, even when the Beis HaMikdash is destroyed, it's a kapara for the Nefoshes of Yidin. How is this an explanation why Bilam doesn't curse Yidin? Fabir. So the Pshat is as follows. And now again, the Rebbe tells us, we have to look back to see what happens over here in the story. If you want to know what Rashi is saying, you have to see the context of the Psukim. Why did Bilam want to curse the Yidin? What happened there? Ha'achonah de Bilam, in the preparation of Bilam for his Nevuah, in the beginning of, the, of all this whole Indian here, Hoysa, v'leholach kepam bepam lekras nechoshen. He did not, he was, wasn't going like he did usually when he was saying his nevuah. What, what, he was trying to do something different. Pirish Rashi. So Rashi explains, what did he, what did he try to do different? He said, Askir avoniseyem. Let me mention, let me remind the Eibishter of the Eden sins. Va'aklole al askaras avoniseyem tochel. And then my curses upon Eden will take effect for the Avedis that Eden do. That's what Bilam was trying to do. Ulechein, so therefore, achakach, when Bilam comes and finally benches them, so it's necessary to explain why Taki it is that remembering and mentioning the Avedis of Yidin, the Klala, the curse, will not take effect. When the Pasuk says, The Ma'ala of the Beis HaMikdash, or the Ayal Shiloi, is Pirushai, Pirish, the Pshar is, Shemakrivim ben Karbanes lechaper aleichem. That the Beis HaMikdash is mechaper, it atones for all, I mean the same, as Kaper and the sins of the Eden are atoned for, and therefore the Klala cannot take effect on the, on the Avainus, on the Avainus of the Eden. That's why Rashi brings in this whole Indian of the Karbanus and the Kapare to explain why Taked the Nevuah of Bilam, where he was trying to mention the Avainus of Eden, couldn't take effect. But Rashi is not satisfied with this. Aleph number one, This only includes those sins when the, when the Beis HaMikdash is standing. But there's still room for the Klala of Bilam to take effect, looking at the future in the Avedis of Yidin after the Chorban. And then there's no Karbanis to be Machaper. Bay is not only that, Gam Oz, even when the Beis HaMikdash is standing, Harei HaKarbanis Machaperim, Rak Al HaShoyik Bishakaris. The, the Karbanis are only an atonement for those Avedis that is a Shaygig for Issacharis. Ayala Mezid, Bisarasei. There's a Mezid in certain cases for an Issarasei where there's also a carbon. Ayalavin Shain in certain Lavin, as it says in Chumim Parshas Vayikra, that there's a carbon for. Avalala Mezid, Bisarasei. For a Mezid, and a Bay Issacharis, or Mrs. Bezdin Vachulo, where there's a Mrs. Bezdin, ain't a carbonis Machaprim. The carbonis do not atone for the Avedis of Eden. Vimkain, are they Efshe Shotachla Klala, Alvin is saying Melum. So the Klala of Bilam that he was trying to remind of the Avedis of Yidin could take effect even while the Beis HaMikdash is standing for these Avedis that there are no Kabbanas for. L'chein, Moisif Rashi. So therefore Rashi adds, V'churbanon kapara ala nefoshes. The destruction of the Beis HaMikdash is a kapara for their souls. What's this mean? What's the meaning of souls? Masim lepirushai. And this goes along with what Rashi explains before in Parshas Kairach. These individuals that sinned with their souls, and Rashi there says, They are sinners with their souls. When is that? That they came to rebel and fight against the Abishta himself, which is Tachlis Abshia. This is the ultimate sin to come and rebel against the Abishta himself. So what Rashi over here is saying is that the Churban Beis Mikdash 
is an atonement even for the greatest Aveda of all, even for a, a, a Shia and a, 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 when they are fighting against Abishta himself. So therefore we understand that the Chorban Beis Mikdash is a kapara for everything, for all Avedas. If even the worst Avedas, so it's a kapara for everything. That's why the Nevua, why that's what Bilam is saying over here, that his, um, his curse can't take effect, because even for the worst Aveda, he didn't have a, a, a kapara through the Chorban. Kein Yeshleiman. Another thing that Rebbe says we can say is she kavanosai, that the kavan of Rashi over here, here are kapanim le, le ramis. Our Rashi is at least is hinting to this kapara ala nefashes. There's a kapara for the souls, plural term souls. What is this referring to? It's referring to two times in the Torah when it uses the term nefesh regarding an aveda. Mi nefesh ki sechta b'shgaga, the soul that sins. The soul that sins bemazed. So nefashois refers to the fact that the Chorbin is mechaper on both of these nefashois, whether b'shegik or bemazed. That's the pshat in the Rashi over here. And that's the reason why the Klala of Bilam can't take effect. So Rashi proves the fact that this Chorben is a kapare for the Yidin, a total kapare for all sins. Shenema kilo Hashem es chamosai. The Pasuk says this ends Hashem's anger. The emphasis on the word kilo. Kaloima meaning, shal yideva yatzeis eish b'tzien. By, by bringing the fire in the Beis HaMikdosh, Chorben Beis HaMikdosh, the destruction of the Beis HaMikdosh, kol socha masa shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu, this totally ended the anger of the Eivishter, she beglal of Inesayim Shal Yisrael, which is a result of the Avedis of Yidin. So hare, this proves, she neskapru, al yidea chorben, kol avoynes gam achi chamurais, v'shem ba'ova gamken, all Avedis of Yidin, even of the past, everything was totally, totally atoned for through the Chorben Beis HaMikdosh. Otherwise, there's still left over of the Abish's anger. And the Pasuk says, Kilo, that the destruction ends the Abish's anger. So that's the riot to the whole thing that Rashi is trying to say here that Bilam sees that there are no Avedis. There are no Avedis by Yidin that his curses could take effect on because the Yidin have Karbanis, and even when they don't have Karbanis, they have the destruction of the Besam Mikdosh, which is a kapara for all the Avedis of Yidin. We'll move on al and based on this we understand Why Rashi brings again from the Pasik the words when he says the second pshat to emphasize that these words of Bilam here This is also an introduction to explain that the, that the uh, klala, the, the curses can't take effect even though, according to the second pshat, it is a prophecy for itself, but it's also an introduction and a reason why the uh, klala can't take effect. That's what Rashi wants to tell you, that even according to this pshat, he is explaining the ma and this is what forces us to say that what is the goodness of the Beis HaMikdosh who it's the Karbanis that atones for the Avedis and also the destruction of the Beis HaMikdosh is the Kapara. Now based on this we can understand. The question of the Rebbe, one of the questions before was, why doesn't Ashi bring this in Parshas Pekude as well, where it's mentioned the first time, Hamishkan Hamishkan. So over there, there's no point in bringing this Indian of the Karbanis. There it's just coming to speak about, it's a hint for the two Batim Mikdashis. It's not this whole theme that we're talking about over here. The Kapad of Eden is irrelevant there. The Mail of the Beis Mikdash, what it's all about, is not, it's not Negei. It's just coming to be Meramas, that there's going to be more than one Mishkan. There's going to be another two Mikdashis. Mashen King Khan, Kanal, which is not the case over here, as we already explained. Over here, we're coming to explain why the Nevua of Bilam and why the Klala of Bilam could not take effect in Klal Yisrael. Now the Rebbe will explain what's the problem with the second shot. Why does not Rashi? Why doesn't Rashi bring only the second shot? However, we have the following problems with the second shot. Aleph number one: It's a doichik to say that the Beis Hamikdash, which is a house, it's a permanent place, should be referred to in the pasuk with the expression of oil, oil which is a temporary place. Bays, another problem is 
Nizboyer, there's another Sikha, this is in Chelek Yer Aleph, where the Rebbe explains. Regarding the Rashi in Pekude. Why there does Rashi not say that the two times that it says Mishkan refers to Mishkan Shiloi and to the Beis HaMikdosh, like he does here? Kiyim al Beis HaMikdoshes. Why over there does Rashi say that it refers to the two Bata Mikdoshes? L'fishal Mishkan Shiloi lo yitachan aloshin mashkin. Because regarding the Mishkan Shiloi, it doesn't, it's not really uh, befitting to use the term Mashkin, that it's a security, that the Ebesha takes it as a security. Why not? What's the, what's the concept of a Mashkin? Mashkin hu dovar ha nitl me'aloive ba'ifin aray. A Mashkin is a collateral, a security that you take from the borrower on a temporary basis. Aray uzmani, achi yifra ha'chayv, until he pays back the loan. Sh'oz chayzer ha'mashkin ha'bailo. And then you give him back the, the Mashkin. So using that as a, a, over here regarding the Beis HaMikdosh, to say that the Ebeshtik gives back what he's taking, that you could only say regarding the Beis HaMikdosh. In the second Beis HaMikdosh, he even got back the same Beis HaMikdosh as well. Now the Rebbe adds, although the second Beis HaMikdosh was not exactly the same as the first place of Mikdash, but Mikomakim Shavimem in the Kudasama Ikris. They are similar in the main point of what they are. Shashneim Bayas Lakadash Baruch. They're both a permanent home for the Abishta. Mashainke Mishkan Shiloi, which is not the case when it comes to Mishkan Shiloi, Hurak Dirasara. That's a temporary dwelling. Vimkain, Echaf Shaloyma, Shem Mishkan Isecha, Koi Gamal Mishkan Shile, Bechorboni, Liyaisai Mashkin. That the term Mishkan Isecha refers to Mishkan Shile, which was a temporary dwelling, and it's only a Mashkin, and the Abish will give back Mishkan Shile. The Abish never gives back Mishkan Shile. After Mishkan Shile was destroyed, the Besamitish was built. This Mishkan was never given back. So therefore, in Parshish Pekude, Rashi doesn't say this. Ulepirish Zeh, Shem Mishkan Isecha, and according to what Rashi says over here, that Mishkan Isecha does refer to the tents. It refers to the tents when they are destroyed. That's why over here, as we said before, Rashi says that it refers to an oil. It refers to the Mishkan Shile, which is an oil, because Mishkan Isecha is talking about the oil when it's destroyed. Hayes over here, the Pasik uses the term Oihal Lecha. We're going to have to say that it at least includes also the Mishkan Shile, which is a tent. So, therefore, this, this creates a problem. On one hand, we have to say we're talking about a tent, which is Mishkan Shiloi. On the other hand, regarding Mishkan Shiloi, you can't really say that it's a Mashkin, because it's not a collateral that Abisha takes and returns. Mashenkim be Parshis Pikudei. In Parshas Pekude, the Torah doesn't use the term Oyalecha, Shemipnei Kushya Ana, because of this question. Mefarshim Shakosav Leikoy Al Shilei. The Pasik there we say, Taka is not talking about Shilei, it's talking about the tomb, Batim Mikdashis, which the Ebishtah takes and returns. So those are the problems that we have with the second Pshat of Rashi. Chaim, Mochrech, Rashi, Lefarish, Gama, Pirish, Arishain. Therefore, Rashi also brings the first Pshat, the other the first pshat is closer to the simple pshat of the pasik. The first pshat is the main pshat of the pasik. Because the first pshat is smoother in the flow of the pasik, as Rashi explained, as Rebbe explained before. And what's the main problem we have? The problem we have with the first pshat is only in the order that things are switched around. Bilam begins talking. With um, about about the encampments of the or, or the positions of the tents, and only after that he talks about the general encampments of Yidden. So it's out of order. Regarding something which is out of order in the pasuk, so that you find a few times in Taira that you switch around the order of the pasuk. Which is not the case in the second shot. Over here, there's a problem in the teichen of the pasuk. That it's, it's talking about an oil, and that we, we say it goes on the base of Mikdash, which is a bias. And it's talking about a mashkin, and it's not really a mashkin bachla. The Ebesha does not return the same mishkin shiloi. So this, these are much bigger questions, and therefore Rashi brings the second pittish second, and the first pittish is first. 
the lesson that we can take from this Rashi. From the content of what Rashi is telling us here, we can see how important and how relevant and how powerful the Indian of Tznius is, modesty is. Even this detail, that their doorways of their tents are not precisely one across another. This is not a very central and important thing in Sneas. It's only the purpose of this is that one person shouldn't be able to appear into the tent of his friend. But even something small like this, when he, even a person like Billa Marasha sees this, so this affects him and causes that Allah Belibay Shalayla Kalalam, that it, he decided not to curse the Yidin Vacha Barcham and he benched them like a continuation of, a continuation of the Pasik, Kanachalam Nitayu Gaimer. So the lesson of this is Al Yaimarada, a person should not make the mistake and say to himself, when it comes to those basics and those very important things in, in, in the areas that sneers, like the first thing that it says here in the Postage, that the Shvatim are camping all separately and they're not, are in, they're not intermingled. We're talking here about the fact that families are separate and the relationships are appropriate and the children are born that are kosher. The main things about sneers, ye and nizr. That's the basics and the main things. That's something that he can be careful with. When it comes in the area of tznius, of something that seems to be very trivial, very petty. Over here, this is an area that is not so necessary to be so careful with this. So this is a mistake. A person should know. Even the smallest detail in tznius is very important. Like we see over here, the effect of even this small detail that Bilam noticed that the effect it had on him that he did not curse the Eden. And it, 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 changed, it changed his heart from one extreme to another. But there's still room for the Yetzirah to come and persuade a person and to tell him as follows. When is it true that even a petty, even a small detail of Tznius is important? When a person is in his primary place and his general and more permanent conduct. When a person is in a temporary place, it's not his regular place, when he's out on a trip somewhere, when he's out of the city, when he's out of his normal place, and over there he's more relaxed and more open. So over there he thinks that it's not so important to be careful with even the smallest details of Tznius. So for this, you also have the lesson. That he sees this small detail that the openings of their tents are not right across each other, which means even when they're in temporary dwellings, even when a person is found in a temporary place, this being careful and this level of tznius, that even the smallest thing matters, is relevant here as well. On the other hand, when a person is careful with this, then the result is the to transforms everything into a blessing. As Rashi says, he wanted to curse Eden, but he benched Eden, the Adla, Yio, the Mishkan, Atoiv, Bishlemos, the Abishta returns the Mishkan completely, Shayachzara Kadosh Baruch is a Mashkin, the Abishta returns the Mashkin, the Beis Elamim, the Beis Mishkan, the Beis Mikdosh, Shamashkin Meida. The idea of a security is, Shigam Beis Achorb Nareo Kayam. The, the lender holds the security there and it exists in its possession all the time. So the Beis HaMikdash is there, prepared and ready. And when the Eden's atonement will be completed, it will come down and descend in the world forever and ever. Before I conclude there, let me just um, refer you to Ha'ara 34, which as you notice, is Ha'ara which is emphasized, and the words are even larger than the Pnim of the Sikhe. So the Rebbe here spoke about the conduct of Tznius, and being careful in Tznius, even in a temporary dwelling. So the Rebbe says, 
Here is the place to emphasize something that's relevant for this time of the year, in summer when people go out, out of their regular dwellings. Those people that are lenient, in areas of Tznias in the summer. And specifically, they're found in their vacation homes outside of the city, and there, from those, they say to themselves, I could sin and uh, do tshuva. The expression that Chazal used, Echtova Oshuv, and the Rebbe here on the play of words, the Rebbe says, Echtova Oshuv, Kasha Oshuv, Eira. When I'm out, outside of the city, so over there I'm more relaxed, over there I don't have to be so careful when I'm in the, when I'm in the temporary dwelling. When I come back to the city, Oshuv, so there I'll go back to my regular conduct of Sneas. And the Rebbe adds, V'negeila and Hoges and Noshim Gamkein, Sneas is relevant for men as well. This is something the Rebbe used to speak about many times, that Sneas is not only for women, but it's for men as well, ubefrat lenoshim, but it's more specifically relevant for women, shahare kol echad ve'echad mehen, nikras akeres abayis, she is the anchor of the home, and therefore her conduct, it will affect to a very large degree, the children that she raises, v'yesh laharech ve'en kam mekoymai.